everyone, and welcome to Bedtime Stories. My name is Monkey Puppet, and my pronouns are he and him. I'm so happy that you're joining me today. Kids like me learn to read at school, but we learn to love reading right here at home with our families. Spending time with books becomes a positive experience for kids when families can regularly take the time to relax and enjoy reading comfortably together. Three cheers for books and three cheers for families. So grab a blanket and a stuffy and cuddle up with someone you love. And let's get started. Today's bedtime stories are all about family pride. Our stories are And Tango Makes Three by Justin Richardson and Peter Parnell, illustrated by Henry Cole. Heather Has Two Mummies by Leslea Newman and illustrated by Laura Cornell. And Love Makes a Family by Sophie Beer. And Tango Makes Three by Justin Richardson and Peter Parnell, illustrated by Henry Cole. For Lita, for Lucy Jane, and for Maddie and Ben, and to Nate and penguin lovers everywhere. In the middle of New York City, there is a great big park called Central Park. Children love to play there. It has a toy boat pond where they can sail their boats. It has a carousel to ride on in the summer and an ice rink to skate on in the winter. Best of all, it has its very own zoo. Every day, families of all kinds go to visit the animals that live there. But children and their parents aren't the only families at the zoo. The animals make families of their own. There are red panda bear families with mothers and fathers and furry red panda bear cubs. There are monkey dads and monkey moms raising noisy monkey babies. There are toad families and toucan families and cotton top tamarind families too. And the penguin house, there are penguin families. Every year at the same time, the girl penguins start noticing the boy penguins and the boy penguins start noticing the girls. When the right girl and the right boy find each other, they become a couple. Two penguins in the penguin house were a little bit different. One was named Roy, and the other was named Silo. Roy and Silo were both boys, but they did everything together. They bowed to each other and walked together. They sang to each other and swam together. Wherever Roy went, Silo went too. They didn't spend much time with the girl penguins, and the girl penguins didn't spend much time with them. Instead, Roy and Silo wound their necks around each other. Their keeper, Mr. Gramsci, noticed the two penguins and thought to himself, they must be in love. Roy and Silo watched how the other penguins made a home, so they built a nest of stones for themselves. Every night, Roy and Silo slept there together, just like the other penguin couples. And every morning, Roy and Silo woke up together. But one day, Roy and Silo saw that the other couples could do something they could not. The mama penguin would lay an egg, and the papa penguin would take turns keeping the egg warm until finally it would hatch. And then there would be a baby 
penguin. Roy and Silo had no egg to sit on and keep warm. They had no baby chick to feed and cuddle and love. Their nest was nice, but it was a little empty. One day, Roy found something that looked like what the other penguins were hatching and brought it to their nest. It was only a rock, but Silo carefully sat on it and sat and sat. When Silo got sleepy, he slept. And when Silo was done sleeping and sitting, he swam and Roy sat. Day after day, Silo and Roy sat on the rock. But nothing happened. Then Mr. Gramsci got an idea. He found an egg that needed to be cared for, and he brought it to Roy and Silo's nest. Roy and Silo knew just what to do. They moved the egg to the center of their nest. Every day they turned it, so each side stayed warm. Some days Roy sat on it while Silo went for food. Other days it was Silo's turn to take care of the egg. They sat in the morning, and they sat at night. They sat through lunchtime and swim time and supper. They sat at the beginning of the month, and they sat at the end of the month, and they sat all of the days in between. Until one day, they heard a sound coming from inside their egg. Beep! Beep, 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 beep. It said, Roy and Silo called back. Squawk! Squawk! Beep, beep! Answered the egg. Suddenly, a tiny hole appeared in the egg's shell. And then... Pop! Crack! Out came their very own baby. She had fuzzy white feathers and a funny black beak. Now Roy and Silo were fathers. We'll call her Tango, Mr. Gramsci decided, because it takes two to make a Tango. Roy and Silo taught Tango how to sing for them when she was hungry. They fed her food from their beaks. They snuggled her in their nest at night. Tango was the very first penguin in the zoo to have two daddies. Soon Tango grew strong enough to leave the nest. Roy and Silo took her for a swim, just like the, all the other penguin families. And all the children who came to the zoo could see Tango and her two fathers playing in the penguin house with the other penguins. Hooray, Roy! Hooray, Silo! Welcome, Tango! They cheered. At night, the three penguins returned to their nest. There they snuggled together and, like all the other penguins in the penguin house and all the other animals in the zoo and all the families in the big city around them, they went to sleep. And you know what? All of the events in this story are true. Roy and Silo are called chinstrap penguins because of the delicate line of black feathers that loops under their beaks, as if to hold a hat in place. After years of living side by side in the Central Park Zoo, they discovered each other in 1998, and they've been a couple ever since. Tango, their only chick, was born from an egg laid by another penguin couple named Betty and Porky. That couple had often hatched their own eggs, but they had never been able to care for more than one at a time. In 2000, when Betty lay two fertile eggs, Rob Gramsci decided to give Roy, Silo, and one of those eggs a chance to become a family. If you go to Central Park Zoo, you can see Tango and her parents splashing about in the penguin house, along with their friends, 
including Nipper, Squawk, Charlie, Wasabi, and Peewee. There are 42 chinstrap penguins at the Central Park Zoo and over 10 million chinstraps in the world. But there is only one tango. Heather Has Two Mummies by Leslea Newman Illustrated by Laura Cornell For Sarah and Miranda Crane and all their friends And to my wonderful family And to Heather's wonderful family Heather lives in a little house with a big apple tree in the front yard and lots of tall grass in the backyard. Heather's favorite number is two. She has two arms, two legs, two eyes, two ears, two hands, and two feet. Heather has two pets. A ginger colored cat named Ginger Snap. And a big black dog named Midnight. Heather also has two mummies, Mama Jane and Mama Kate. <coughs> Mama Kate is a doctor. She has two stethoscopes so she and Heather can listen to each other's heartbeats. Bo-bum, 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 bo-bum. Mama Jane is a carpenter. She has two hammers, so she and Heather can build things together. Heather can hammer with one hammer, one hammer, one hammer. Heather can hammer with one hammer all day long. Heather and her mummies have lots of fun together. On sunny days, they go to the park. Du -du 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 -du. On rainy days, they stay inside and bake cookies. Heather likes to eat two ginger snaps and drink a big glass of milk. One day, Mama Kate and Mama Jane tell Heather that they have a surprise for her. You are going to start school next week, Mama Kate says. There will be lots of other kids to play with and a teacher named Ms. Molly, adds Mama Jane. Can Midnight and Ginger Snap come too? asks Heather. No, they have to stay home, Mama Jane says. But you can bring two special things with you, says Mama Kate. Heather chooses her favorite blue blanket to rest with at nap time and her favorite red cup to drink out of at snack time. Soon the big day arrives and Mama Kate and Mama Jane take Heather to her new school. There are so many things to play with. Heather sees building blocks, dress up clothes, crayons and paint. Heather also sees a big round table for snack time. Ah, and a quiet cozy area for nap time. While Mama Jane and Mama Kate talk to Ms. Molly, Heather puts two puzzles together all by herself. Soon it's time for Mama Jane and Mama Kate to leave. They kiss Heather goodbye. <coughs> and Heather cries. <coughs> but only a little. Heather has lots of fun at her new school. She builds a tower out of building blocks and dresses up like a firefighter. Wee, 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 wee. She drinks apple juice out of her favorite red cup at snack time oh, and rests in the quiet corner with her favorite blue blanket at nap time. After nap time, 
all the children sit in a circle while Miss Molly reads them a story about a boy whose father is a veterinarian. Who knows what a veterinarian is? asks Miss Molly. I do. My mommy's a veterinarian, one says. A veterinarian is an animal doctor. My daddy's an animal doctor too, shouts David. My mommy's a people doctor too. Heather shouts even louder. What does your daddy do? David asks Heather. I don't have a daddy, Heather says. She looks around the circle and wonders. Am I the only one here who doesn't have a daddy? I have an idea, Ms. Molly says. Let's all draw pictures of our families. Juan draws his mummy, daddy, and big brother Carlos. Miriam draws her mummy and her sister Rachel playing in the park. Stacy draws her daddy and her papa reading her stories. Joshua hangs up the picture he drew of his mummy and stepfather dropping him off at his daddy's house. Emily tapes up the picture she drew of her grandma and her two puppies, Emmett and Charlie. David straightens out the picture he drew of the day his mummy and daddy brought his new sister Veronica home. Ms. Molly looks at all the pictures. It doesn't matter how mu many mummies or daddies your family has, Ms. Molly said. It doesn't matter if your family has sisters or brothers or cousins or grandmas or grandpas or uncles or aunts. Each family is special. The most important thing about a family is that all the people in it love each other. Soon Heather's first day of school is over. When Mama Kate and Mama Jane arrive to pick her up, Heather shows them all the pictures. Is that me? Mama Kate asks, pointing to Heather's picture. And is that me? Mama Jane asks, pointing to. This is the mummy I love the best, Heather says, pointing to her picture. And this is the mummy I love the best, Heather says, pointing again. Mama Kate and Mama Jane both laugh as Heather gives each of them two kisses. <coughs> then she takes their hands and they all head home. Love Makes a Family by Sophie Beer Love is Waking up bright and early. <laughs> Love is baking a special cake. Love is knowing where everything is. Love is splash! Finding the biggest puddles. Yippee! Love is lending a helping hand. Love is hooray! Watching from the front row. Love is playing on the weekend. Love is making things better again. Love is washing away the day. Whoosh. Love is reading one more book. Ah. Ooh. Ooh. Love is 
Chasing away monsters. Love is a kiss before bed. Good night. Whether your family has one parent, two mummies, two daddies, two pets, brothers, sisters, a monkey, aunties, uncles, grandparents, or another special caregiver, the most important thing about a family is that the people in it love and care for each other. Oh, I'm getting sleepy. And I bet you're getting sleepy too. It's time to sleep. Good night, my friends. Mwah! All families are welcome at Mothercraft Early On Child and Family Center. Our family support workers are here for you. As registered early childhood educators, we are happy to speak with you about any questions you might have about your child's development. However, if you are looking for a supportive space specifically for families of diverse sexual orientations, gender identities, and configurations to play, learn, talk, and grow with each other, we would encourage you to also check out the amazing 519 Early On Child and Family Center. Find our contact information and links to the 519 and today's books in the description box below.